Hey guys, it's been a little while. I've been on a little bit of a break from YouTube, but I did record a video about a week ago, and I'm gonna go ahead and put it in here, and you get to watch that video. And then my next vlog will be a catch up on anything else that you've missed over this past week. So, sorry for the delay in videos, but I hope that you'll all be back with me soon. Hey boys, are you coming with me? Yeah. We gotta go, we gotta go take first, care of the... But first I wanna swing. Okay, I'm gonna go head down to the barn and start taking care of the goats. Okay. Here, baby. That's for you. Oh good, you're eating it. That's right, you eat your healthy gruel. Pumpkin, yogurt, and molasses. The perfect thing for an upset tummy. And then she can have some slippery elm for dessert. Our little angel Autumn is suffering from some pretty bad diarrhea, which absolutely terrifies this goat mom. Guys are good. Good doggies. Yeah, sweet. So I'm not sure what's causing her diarrhea. She has a great Famacha score. Her eyelids are nice dark red. So I'm not suspecting parasites. Um, and she's been perky. She has not had an appetite for her grain. She's been eating other things, hay, and nibbling on stuff in the paddock and stuff. And the only thing I can think of is that she may have nibbled a little bit on something she shouldn't have. Our paddock is pretty clear of any toxic stuff, but there is the occasional small plant that comes up that should not be in there, and usually the goats do not touch it. And there's not enough of it in there for them to be truly harmed from. But my thinking is, is maybe she nibbled on a little piece of it and it's just caused her to have an upset stomach. But then the other fear that creeps up in my mind is coccidia. It is the perfect time of year in weather conditions. We just had eight inches of rain over the weekend. So it does increase the odds that there could be a coccidia bloom. The problem with that right now for me is without getting a fecal exam done, I don't know that it's that. And I'm not going to treat for coccidia without a confirmed fecal exam. And the reason why I can't do a fecal exam right now is because her diarrhea is completely liquid. So there's no way to get a proper sample from that kind of stool. So I'm going to give the herbs that I know support the treatment of coccidia. So lots of garlic, we're gonna do some cayenne, um, some clove and cinnamon, all of these things that, that can help that. But the one thing that I know is really gonna help and helps in any diarrhea case, whether it's something she ate that was bad or whether it is coccidia, is to make sure that she has a nice lining on her intestine using the slippery elm bark. Slippery elm bark is a very important homestead herb to have on hand for your animals and your family. Hey, hold on. She's definitely not lethargic, but she's not bouncing around as much as usual. But she's still, she's still up and at them. So there's no need to be concerned yet. But considering she is truly one of my children, more so than any animal I've ever owned. I'm going to be right on top of this and treating it quickly. We started out yesterday as soon as we saw the diarrhea with activated charcoal to help bind to anything that may have been in her system. And we are 
continuing to treat with slippery elm and herbs. Now, I could use a slightly more conventional treatment for diarrhea and give her Pepto-Bismol, but if this is a poisonous plant she ingested, we want her to poop it out. We want her to continue pooping. We just don't want it to be so fast that it causes dehydration. Dehydration is a big risk factor in animals with diarrhea. So she's drinking lots of water. I've watched her drink at least five times already this morning. So she's drinking really well. She's staying hydrated and she's staying active. So those are the big ones that we watch out for is loss of energy and loss of hydration. Those are both signs of something more serious going on but I can't help but be terrified because this is my baby. So y'all, please send out some major prayers for our sweet little Autumn. All right, I'm being vulnerable and showing you my mess. This is all my mess. My mess of stuff that I need to plant. I've got some flowers for the garden. I've got some herbs down here. I've got more tomato plants than I had space for with only being able to plant half of my garden this year but I think that those can go up against the fence so I haven't thrown them out yet for that reason. I've got some echinaceas, marigolds, uh, what are these flowers called? These, these, not the marigold that's mixed in there. Where's, where's one in bloom? There's one in bloom. These ones. I can't think of the name. And I've got some black eyed Susans to plant. We've been lucky to get lots and lots of perennial flowers after they're no longer able to be sold at the nursery and they've gone past their prime or they're full of weeds or they're starting to die or they're no longer in bloom. We're able to take them home. Well, this morning, whoa, guys, whoa. Check this out. This is literally an entire dumpster load of perennial flowers that I have got to try to save some of. It is a mix of salvia and phlox and asters and echinacea, cat and mint, just tons of amazing perennial plants. And I know that some of them will survive living in a pile and start just growing in this spot, but I wanna get some of these that I can in the ground because they deserve it. Creeping phlox, that's one of my favorite spring blooming plants and they really do well here in Georgia. So I'm hoping to start putting these around the yard and handing Ryan the shovel. So telling him where I want them and let him start planting. Pretty amazing. And while he was here dumping, he said, you gotta go check out the blackberries because they're right where the boys can reach them and not be standing in blackberry bushes. So there's blackberries all over here. So I'm gonna finish doing my chores, get the boys to come out here and pick us some blackberries. Oh, they're really good too. We had like really dry weather as the fruit was setting. So it intensified the flavor of the blackberry. But then this weekend gave us a big rain so it intensified the plumpness of the blackberries. So they've got the full flavor and plumpness. Sometimes if you have too much of one or the other, it's not a great crop. This year, perfection. So I definitely want to take advantage of that. I still have all of the ones along the pond too. There's so many blackberries on our property. We would never be able to pick them all. They're really hard to get into uh, without getting scratched up. So, and I can't take the boys along the pond because there's such a high risk of snakes, um, potentially poisonous, um, venomous snakes. This is so funny. So I have these small pots along the edge here. You can't really see because I have so much grass growing up, but those are all cuttings that I'm keeping watered. And inside of one of the cuttings came up with a tomato plant growing out of it so i am just letting it grow and it is the healthiest tomato plant in the whole yard <laughs> and it's growing out of a tiny little pot i'm sure its roots have gone down through the holes in the pots and into the ground by now i think weeds are probably my biggest issue here and they have been since we've moved to this property it was very full of weeds everywhere like the really invasive highly seeding type so it's 
especially right here where the garden is, it was really noxious weeds. So I think that that's a big part of my struggle. And without being able to build raised beds to get them out of the weed seed drop area, um, it makes it harder to maintain the beds in a weed free way. Not having the physical ability to move all this mulch onto the beds has also been a major challenge. We're looking at hopefully getting some help in August, so I'm looking forward to that and I'm very grateful for the people in the community that have reached out and tried to get us help and the group of people that are now taking charge and making sure we do get some help, even if it's just a couple of us that can get together and get some work done. It's still better than nothing. Now how on earth am I going to harvest those elderberries? You see the flowers are turning over into berries already and they're really high up there. The birds are probably going to get to them before I do. <laughs> Little scrunch just came to the fence and touched it with his nose and jumped. I felt bad but you should have known better. All the goats are doing really good. The babies are bouncy babies. Autumn, you feeling any better? She was eating some of her grain, so she's definitely, seems like she's perking up. We just gotta get that diarrhea to stop now. My goodness guys I just had to pull this tractor away from this one because our duck was wedged in there and it looks like he's been in there for a long time because there is a big pile of dew. Buddy are you okay? How did you get yourself stuck like that? Are you okay? He's not me oh good I just saw Autumn getting another drink from the trough. She's been drinking lots. That's a great sign. That makes me feel really comfortable about her making a full recovery. Continued prayers for our sweet, sweet autumn. I could not bear having anything bad happen to this goat after everything we've gone through with her. I'm gonna have to get her like an insurance plan or something. Never mind insurance for myself. I need I need it for my goats. <laughs> what? What are you doing? Baby's running. Baby's running. You heard me down here. Yeah, you're gonna play on those logs and sticks, huh? Cute baby. So you know how I always tell you guys that my garden and my animals are my therapy. They're what helps me through my difficult times when I'm experiencing depression or anxiety. They help me. Um, yesterday was a perfect example of that. I was beginning to have a major anxiety attack. And I said, I'm not gonna lie, I'm not gonna lie, I'm just gonna throw myself into the garden. And look what I got done. <laughs> I said, I'm not gonna film anything, I'm just gonna do it. And I did it, guys. I certainly did it. This was our garlic bed. I got all the garlic pulled and all the weeds pulled. Um, I was trimming off comfrey branches that were in my way along the edge here as I went and I just went nuts guys I went nuts so it, I feel better about this now I gotta get Ryan to come in here and remove these piles of weeds so that I can go ahead and get the next thing that's going in this bed is my sweet potatoes garlic and I mean not garlic turmeric and ginger so I'm gonna do a row of ginger and a row of turmeric and then I'm going to completely smother it all with sweet potato vine. And I think it's going to be really nice. They're going to grow up through the sweet potato vine. Sweet potato are going to grow down. We're going to have roots all in this bed that will need a full summer to completely form good, healthy, robust roots. So by the time all three are ready, we'll just dig up the whole bed and have all three as a great harvest. Those are the kinds of things that I do that I consider kind of you know, permaculture type gardening. So I'm looking at the whole picture and what the needs of the plants are, what the needs of that bed is, what what's gonna be the best advantageous way to do things that's going to both support the environment and support our ability to harvest at the end of the season. 
Looks like I need to get the boys out here to pick some of these strawberries. They're coming up again. They had kind of had a lull with the high heat and drought, but now they're popped back up again. Some of you may be wondering why this one weed got left behind. But look at this thing! Dude, this is the healthiest dandelion leaves I've ever seen on my property. And it came here all by itself. I am hoping that I didn't kill it by taking away all of its protective shelter of weeds. <laughs> now it's getting full sun and wilting, but I should just go ahead and harvest most of it to eat. And then uh, I could uh, let the center growth regrow. But I'm hoping that it stays growing and produces a flower that I can harvest seed off of and actually replant dandelion in my beds. Dandelion is a powerful food source. So something that's really important with tomatoes is to make sure you don't have any leaves this close to the ground. You see how they're touching? You see how the rain splashed up and infected this leaf with blight. So anything that's in the splash zone should be removed from the plant before you start seeing these yellow spots. So these leaves, well, I'm gonna go get my pruners and do a proper trimming. I'm just behind, you know, as usual. I haven't made the time that I need to because I haven't been feeling well. So it's been, it's been a struggle, but I need to get out here and trim off all these lower leaves across the whole bed. If it looks like blight like that leaf does, then I always dispose of them in the trash, not in the compost. You want to remove as much of the blight from your property and being fed back into your soil as possible. Now we live in Georgia, so it's kind of a given that there's blight in our soil, no matter how much we remove and protect, but it's still a good idea to remove any of it that you find. I showed you in the last video what herbicide damage looks like. Um, then there's another real common problem in tomatoes. I see that I have two plants here that are affected by it, so let me show you it. So this plant right here is suffering from tomato wilt. There are a couple of different types of tomato wilts. So I'm not going to go into details about it because it's kind of really hard to tell them apart without doing laboratory research on the plant itself. So what I'm just going to say is if the wilting begins at the top of the plant and works its way down, then that's what you're looking at. And it's most likely not going to recover and oftentimes just it's best off just to remove it from the garden altogether. There are some hybrids that are more resistant to the wilt than others, and that's why that is a good reason to have some hybrids in your garden. Um, it, hybrids are not a bad thing. As much as I love my heirloom, I probably only have one variety of hybrid in here, and that's my sun gold. Well, and then I have that one husky cherry red. I have those that I just bought, just one plant. Um, but the sun gold I really love um, for flavor and it has been s developed over and over so that it is now a stable variety. So it is nice because I can save the seeds off of it and most likely my plants will be the same as they were this year, next year. But I think the big thing to remember is that you're going to have pests, you're going to have disease, you're going to have weeds. That is inevitable. That is gardening. If you are gardening without any of those complications, then you really got an unfair advantage. <laughs> Just saying. And it does kind of make me a little bit jealous of you. But most of the time, situations that come up in a garden, unless you have a full-time gardener or staff working for you, or if you don't have any other um, outside things that you need to take care of and you're able to focus on your garden eight hours a day, you can usually keep those things in check. Keep them well balanced at a good level where they're not going to be a huge impact on your harvest. Sometimes they are, like the caterpillars on the broccoli. I never did spray them with BT and I pretty much don't have any broccoli. I got a few bites, a few small heads, but considering our Georgia weather, I think our broccoli is going to grow a lot better in the fall. I know it will. All of our spring vegetables that we attempted to start this year are going to be a thousand times better this fall, especially if I get some help from some of you guys.
and we're able to get these beds completely mulched and protected and really be able to start on the best foot forward for my healing because my healing is gardening but it's also the food that's coming out of the garden the food that is high density nutrition that feeds my body the way it needs to be fed so many of the problems that I suffer from so many of the chronic illnesses that I'm fighting are often treated with very high quality diets and I don't have the ability to go to the grocery store and buy all organic or go to the farmers market and buy all fresh local but I do have the ability to grow my own with a little bit of help from you my friend Mandy has been very busy getting together the details for this event. I'm just going to say it's August 24th and 25th. If you're able to make it, please join us on the homestead. We're going to have a fun work day with each other. Ooh. A bird is attacking my vulture. So anyway, we're going to have a fun work day and then we're going to have that followed with a bonfire and a cookout and anybody's welcome to pitch a tent around the bonfire and spend the night and if anybody's able to work the next day wonderful we'll get as much done as we can with whatever resources we have and whatever doesn't get done that's okay too but just trying to take an extra step here to help my health and improve my ability to work moving forward